1953, geologists searching for oil in the Sahara Desert stumbled upon an even more precious treasure in the world's largest desert. To extract this treasure, the Libyan authorities invested a staggering $27 billion. You might have already guessed it, but this treasure is none other than water. Hello everyone! Today, I'll be sharing information about possibly the largest irrigation project you've never heard of before. It's the so-called Eighth Wonder of the World, the Great Man-Made River Project in Libya. Are you ready? Let's get started. Where does the water in the desert come from? In the 1950s, as oil was becoming a strategic resource, owning oil meant possessing wealth, prosperity, and influence. During that time, oil was rising to become the primary fuel, surpassing coal, and oil exploration in oil fields around the world was thriving. Oil exploration was also taking place in the southeast of Libya, where a geological survey project was being conducted in the Kufra region. It was during the drilling of oil wells in Libya's Sahara Desert that something now known as the Nubian Sandstone Aquifer System was discovered. Deep underground beneath the sand dunes of four African countries, Libya, Sudan, Egypt, and Chad, lies an immense reservoir of groundwater. This is the world's largest fossil water aquifer system, spanning over 2 million square kilometers in area. To put it into perspective, it's larger than the area of Mexico. The Nubian Sandstone Aquifer System holds around 150,000 cubic meters of fresh water. That's twice the volume of the Caspian Sea. All this water is situated in one of the most arid and inhospitable places on Earth, the Sahara Desert. With an annual rainfall of just 76 millimeters, the annual potential evaporation rate exceeds 2,500 millimeters. How did such an immense amount of water accumulate here? This water seeped through the sandstone over the course of 10,000 to 1 million years ago. During that time, the Sahara Desert experienced a warm climate, receiving abundant rain and maintaining high humidity levels. The Nubian Sandstone Aquifer System stands as a legacy to the last Ice Age's richness, naturally capturing the interest of scholars and policymakers alike. How to Extract Water North Africa is an extremely arid region, and Libya was in desperate need of fresh water. Despite being close to the Mediterranean Sea, Libya was plagued by water supply issues. Desalination of seawater was a highly expensive process, and there were challenges with drawing water from underground wells. Near the coast, fresh water in underground layers would be replaced by salt water, rendering it unsuitable for drinking. Furthermore, excessive water extraction hastened the deterioration of water sources and increased salinity in once fertile lands. This situation needed to be addressed urgently. Upon the discovery of the vast reservoirs of fossil water, the initial plan of the Libyan government was to transform the desert into flower gardens and construct new towns and villages in the southern regions. This would have required the relocation of hundreds of thousands of people and incurred significant costs for logistics and construction. However, in the 1980s, the plan was revised and authorities decided to move water from the south to the north where major Libyan cities are situated. This shift followed the principle of, if pushing doesn't work, try pulling. The construction of a large-scale pipeline was an ambitious project, but all calculations supported the utility of this endeavor. Supplying groundwater through pipelines proved to be the most cost-effective method of water delivery for Libya. Using an artificial river, they could transport 9 cubic meters of water for 1 dinar, whereas the same amount of money would yield only 0.79 cubic meters of desalinated water or 1.05 cubic meters of water transported by ship. The choice was clear, and this decision was made accordingly. While it's true that Libya's underground water is a non-renewable resource, local analysts believe that the stored water reserves underground could last for thousands of years. If that is indeed the case, then the money spent would not have been in vain. Enormous project with a massive investment In 1984, the first shovel extractors arrived in Libya's desert. 
The project involved digging hundreds of wells, laying underground pipelines, constructing reservoirs, pumping stations, and more. Naturally, Libyans alone couldn't handle all of this work, so contractors from countries like South Korea, Italy, Germany, and Australia were brought in to execute the project. The project was divided into five stages. The first stage included the construction of 234 wells at the Salir and Tazirbu water sources, as well as a 1,600-kilometer pipeline connecting the cities of Sirte and Benghazi. This stage presented numerous unique challenges that needed to be overcome. For instance, the pipes were manufactured in special factories within Libya, and their construction cost a staggering $350 million. What's more, these pipes were the world's largest pre-stressed concrete pipes, with a diameter of 4 meters and a length of 7 meters for each pipe. For the first stage alone, a total of 250,000 pipes needed to be laid. These pipes were loaded onto the world's largest forklift, specifically built in Sweden for this purpose, capable of lifting 90-ton structures. The pipes were transported on specially constructed roads, then placed into 7-meter trenches using custom cranes where concrete was poured. But that's not all. Artificial reservoirs were created by excavating the ground and rocks, covering them with asphalt to store the water. Of course, power plants were constructed to supply electricity to the pumps. Eventually, all challenges were overcome and in 1989, the first water flowed into the Ajdabaya Reservoir. An astonishing 2 million cubic meters of water flows in every day. Libya invested $14 billion to achieve the first stage of the plan. This funding primarily came from selling oil. One unique aspect of this project was that it was self-funded without relying on loans from international institutions. Where was the $27 billion invested? Following the first stage, two more stages were implemented requiring an additional $5.6 billion in investment. In the second stage, water was drawn to Libya's capital Tripoli and the Jafara Valley. This marked the completion of another water supply system in western Libya. This system consisted of a 1,227-kilometer pipeline with a daily supply capacity of 2.5 million cubic meters. The third stage involved expanding the water supply network constructed in the first stage, increasing the supply capacity by an additional 1.68 million cubic meters per day. An additional $7.5 billion was invested in the plans for the fourth and fifth stages, but due to civil war, the project was not completed. Ultimately, the systems in the eastern and western regions were intended to be integrated into the town of Sirte. Nevertheless, the sheer scale of this project remained impressive. The total length of the laid pipelines exceeded 5,700 kilometers, which is longer than the distance from London to New York. Furthermore, 1,116 wells were dug, and the total daily water supply capacity reached 6.5 million cubic meters. Additionally, 250 million cubic meters of earth were excavated, which is 2.5 times the amount excavated during the construction of the world's largest dam, the Three Gorges Dam. Libya's dictator, Muammar Gaddafi, referred to this great man-made river as the eighth wonder of the world. This is quite a bold claim, but indeed, this project was highly ambitious. Not only was this project registered in the Guinness Book of World Records, but it was also depicted on the 20 dinar banknote. Despite being overshadowed by Gaddafi's image, the great man-made river is undoubtedly a project worthy of admiration. With the initiation of water supply, it became possible to irrigate a vast area of 1,300 square kilometers, promoting the production of domestic agricultural products. Greening the desert required more than just water, it demanded innovative solutions. For instance, in the late 1980s, the Libyan government purchased 50,000 plastic trees for $1 billion. These were not mere decorations, they were instruments designed to change the climate invented by Spanish inventor Antonio Ibanez de Alba. These trees absorb moisture at night and release it during the day, thereby lowering temperatures. These artificial palms were installed in the Sabha governorate, and within a year, real fruit trees suitable for the altered climate were planted in the same locations. Impressive, isn't it? So, with this, we would like to conclude today's video. Thank you all for watching.
We hope you enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on such large-scale greening efforts being beneficial for nature? Please share your opinions in the comments section. Also, we would like to hear your overall thoughts on the great man-made river, sometimes referred to as the River of Madmen. We we'll look forward to reading your comments. Well, it's time for us to prepare for the next video, so we'll say goodbye for now. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.